Have you ever wondered who were the ancient Egyptians? Were they black, white, or Middle Eastern? This question of the race of the ancient Egyptians is a very controversial one. You have proponents of the white Egyptians, Arabic Egyptians, black Egyptians, Middle Eastern Egyptians, all debating on this issue, especially in the academical spheres. Yet the question remains unagreed upon, in spite of all the archaeological documents, all the statues, all the paintings, despite being one of the most studied ancient civilization on earth, this question of the ethnicity or race of the ancient Egyptians remains unresolved. Despite all the famous wall paintings and famous Egyptian statues left by ancient Egyptian artists, the scholars remain undecided on the issue. Common sense would stand to reason that with all the statues, with all the mummies, with all the paintings left by the ancient Egyptians, this question would be a no-brainer. With DNA studies, with experts in anthropology, human physiognomy and all that, the question remains unresolved. Statues and paintings have been and still are reliable artifacts used in archaeology in order to determine the ethnicity or race of ancient peoples who have left them. Take for instance ancient Greek statues that depicted the typical Greek face of the time. It would be strange to reject them or question the ancient artist's accuracy. The same can be said about ancient Chinese statues, Mesopotamian statues, and so on. Yet when it comes to ancient Egypt, Ancient Egyptian statues are often shown out of context or without context, misinterpreted or misrepresented, sometimes dismissed altogether. Most are shown without a proper context or some relevant ones are simply not even shown. That is why in this first video of a series concerning the ethnicity of ancient Egyptians, we are going to look at some ancient Egyptian wall paintings and statues that I find relevant to the conversation representing the people of the time. This would include a presentation of a number of pictures along with a personal analysis and commentary as well as some of the current experts' opinion on them. So without further ado, let's begin our analysis. The current view of the scholars concerning ancient Egyptian wall paintings is that the skin color of the men depicted on the wall paintings is red-brown, while that of the women is almost always yellow. Well, let's look at the evidence. Let's look at some ancient Egyptian wall paintings and see for ourselves. First, we have a picture of Seti I and his wife that we're going to analyze. First, look at the skin. What color is it? Ask yourself, what color is it? What color came to your mind? It was brown, I'm sure. This is what the scholars call red brown. I do not believe this is red brown. Let's further analyze this. Look at the background. This is a light brown color. Then we have a darker brown color for their skin. This is the artist telling us that their skin was darker than the background. Then gold. Darker than gold. Brown. Look at the texture of the hair. This is a very similar texture that you find in many African peoples on the continent. Locks, dreadlocks, braids. This is a picture that is rarely shown. I've heard of this picture being in French school books, French history books, I've seen that the picture there was lightened. The skin of the pharaoh and his wife were lightened. And talking about the wife, remember that the scholar said that most women in Egypt had yellow skin? Here we can see that the wife had a darkened skin than even that of her husband. Something to ponder. Next, here we have a tomb painting, north side of the west wall of Naxt offering chapels. You can go look it up on Google, it's there, that's where I found all my images. Here we have a couple, again, a woman depicted with brown skin, not yellow, a man depicted with darker brown skin. Then we have other Egyptian males depicted with brown skin, afros. If they had silky hair, they would have represented silky hair. Egyptian artists were very accurate in depicting what they saw. Again, we have here a father. This is a father. Pay attention to his skin. It is brown. Pay attention to the skin of his daughter here. Brown again. His wife, lighter brown. Them on this depiction of him and his workers. What appear to be his workers making wine with a lot of grapes there. We see a lot of brown skinned men with afros. And if you zoom in really closely, you'll see that most of them are depicted with full lips. 
just something to think about again here is the man himself i do not know who this represents probably an egyptian high official again he's here represented with a brown skin dark brown skin and his wife is represented with a lighter brown skin lighter brown skin is very common in africa too and dark brown skin is as well Next we have again a pharaoh depicted in a darker brown skin. This is Pharaoh Ramses III. This is a pharaoh of the new kingdom and you can clearly see that he's depicted with brown skin, full lips, features very similar to that of the Africans further south. You can easily relate this to the skin color that you find in Kenya, Ethiopia, Somali and most eastern African countries, even west African countries. Here we have Egyptians being represented in the tomb of Seti I. Again, I am still looking for the red-brown skin talked about by the scholars. When you look at the pictures unedited by any scholars, you find out that many ancient Egyptian paintings depicted men with brown skin, not red-brown skin. This is what I have found. I wanted to look at the paintings for myself and this is an image from Getty's images. They do not edit their pictures. They take the picture and they post it as they took it again zoom on his face you can clearly see that lips are represented as full full lips being a feature mostly found in africa most africans have full lips pay attention to the lips of the middle easterners europeans they are not full Next, we have a picture of ancient Egyptian men and women. The men appear to be offering certain things to women. It seems to be something like a wedding or courting. Again, look at the men, pay attention to their hair. The texture seems to be afro. One of them, he appears to be bold. The hues of the skin of the men seems to be varying. As you can see here, this one has lighter brown skin and this one has a darker brown skin. And if you zoom in, you can see that both their lips are represented as full. This seem to be young men doing very fine in the society. They're doing pretty well. I mean, look at what they're offering. They seem to be very wealthy. Now, here we have the, the female represented with what I would call a very pale shade of brown. But I can see how some scholars can have interpreted this color as yellow. And I have a little explanation as to why the ancient Egyptian might have represented women with a yellow skin, even though their skin was not always yellow. Yellow is a color representing honey and honey is often a sign of fertility when it comes to women in many African societies and I believe even other populations outside of Africa. Yellow and honey has been linked to fertility so I would believe that the yellow color is a representation of fertility. You can look it up but that's just my opinion. They could just be pale Egyptian women. That can also be the case. I am not advocating for an ancient Egypt that was all black. I'm not. I'm not doing that here. I'm just here so that we can all look at the evidence and see for ourselves what is represented. Next, we have what appears to be a harvest scene from ancient Egypt in the tomb of Mena. This is again a typical scene depicting men with a darker color, but we can see a woman here with a darker skin color too. She is depicted with the same skin tone that the men are represented with. Yet we have another woman here with a lighter brown shade. Again, this is brown, but this picture obviously appears to be edited. This is from a book, not from a direct source. I wish I could have gone to Egypt to take a look at the painting myself. If you find yourself in Egypt, go to the tomb of Mena and see for yourself what color is depicted on this. But again, this is brown. This is clearly brown. And if you zoom in, the features are again full lips, very similar to that of the Africans further south. Right here, we have two beautiful women from ancient Egypt. This is from the tomb of Usarat and his wife. Here we have two beautiful women, really gorgeous. Uh, again, pay attention to the skin color here. The first woman appears to have brown skin again, and the second lighter brown skin. And again, we find more evidence of women being represented with brown skin color and not always yellow. And look at the hair texture. Again, this is a hair texture that is very similar to women from Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya. These are logs and curly hair very similar to that of the Africans further south. On this picture we have a painting from the tomb of Nebamun. As you can see the wall is not complete but we can clearly see a lot of women and men here. This appears to be a wedding ceremony with a lot of naked women dancing there. Must have been pretty cool to you know. 
I digress. Um, again, look at the women here, not depicted with the yellow skin that the scholars always talk about. We see a lot of women here, all depicted with brown skin, Afro-like hairstyles. And if you zoom in on this woman here, next to the naked woman on top there, you can see that her lips are full. Same for the women next to her. And if you look very well at the singers here, the singers, very beautiful women. If you zoom in into their faces, you can clearly see full lips. Again, features very similar similar to that of the Africans. Pay attention to their skin. Again, not yellow, but brown. Here is another painting from an Egyptian tomb. This is Ipui and his wife receiving gifts. Again, pay attention to the skin tones. Brown, lighter brown for the woman, but not yellow again. And this is a, a wife of a high official. She is represented as accurately as possible because the artist paid attention to accuracy. So here we can see, if you zoom in, the lips are again full, same for the woman. And again, the hair, the hair texture is very telling, very similar to that of the Africans. Locks, braids, and all, very similar. Oh, and again, pay attention to this this appears to be a man giving a gift to Ipui. Pay attention to what he's wearing. This is a leopard skin. You can see a lot of monarchs in Africa and important people wearing leopard skin. Again, a link between Egypt and Africa. And this view of some scholars that ancient Egypt had no link whatsoever to Africans further south is simply strange to me. Next, we have an Egyptian queen and a goddess. If I could read hieroglyphics, I could have identified this queen, but I digress. Pay attention to her skin tone. Again, light brown, lighter brown shade, full lips. Again, features similar to that of the Africans. We already talked about full lips being a trait found more into the African population than to the populations outside of Africa. And here, I believe this is the goddess represented with a yellow skin and white is she represented with the yellow skin i already gave you my little opinion on that they're representing fertility rather than the actual skin again here we have a painting from king tutankhamun tombs the most famous pharaoh in egypt well let's take a look at his depiction by the artist again pay attention to the skin tone yes light brown but still brown and this is again an edited picture you can tell this comes from a book colors are uh, diminished i wish i could go to king tut's tomb and take a picture for myself but again i'm not rich like that but i really wish i could maybe in the future i'll go and take some pictures for y'all create my little book of ancient egyptian paintings tomb paintings and statues right okay so here you can see king tut's face here with full lips again uh the man behind him full lips and even the god has full lips again pay attention to the hair texture this is a very similar hair texture to the nubians uh here where tutankhamun is, seems to be holding a staff and wearing a cobra like crown you can see that the hair texture is very similar to that of the nubians again a hair texture that can only be achieved by uh, Afro hair, African hair, coarse hair. Again, not kinky, I call it coarse hair. Coarse hair, good. And then at, at the far hand here, we have the god Amun again. Pay attention to his lips, his skin color, brown, full lips. Even the nose is resembling more that of the African. And here is to me the most telling depiction of all. This here is the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic for face. If they wanted to say face, they drew this. I'm not kidding. Go research. Go do the research. I encourage you to go type on Google ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic for face. This is the face that comes up. Now, pay attention to the features. The flat, broad nose. The full lips. The round, flat face. The broad face the broad features this is clearly the face of an african a typical african right here now why would a people that is not african that is not similar that does not share any similarities to the africans further south represent the face for excellence the hieroglyphic for face with the face of an outsider the face of someone who does not belong to their race ask yourself this question 
you can find this hieroglyphic on the temple of Hatshepsut. This is the new kingdom, Egypt. Had they been different from this phase, they would probably have changed the features. But the reality is that they did not. They knew this was their face. This was the face of the Egyptian. This was the face common in Egypt. This was the face of their ancestors. It is very telling. Now, why doesn't anybody talk about this? Why doesn't anybody show this? I bet you've never seen this before. Maybe from the channel Home Team History, from which I got this information from. Shout out to him. I love his channel. Pretty objective there. I like objectivity. Why not show this? Why not discuss this? Why make claims such as there was no link to the Africans further south? Why make such claims when there is such evidence? The dishonesty is there. It's pretty telling. But I digress. Next, we have again a man with his family. This is from the tomb of Nebamun. The man is here depicted with a brown skin. Zoom in on his face. You will see the features that I've been talking about throughout all this video. Very similar to that of the Africans further south again. I cannot emphasize this more. And pay attention again to the skin color of the man and his woman and his little daughter there the women have darker skin the man has a lighter one actually again the women always being depicted as yellow mm, i'm starting to question that because whenever they say that they never show this they never show this how many pictures have i shown where women were depicted with brown skin and sometimes darker than that of the men and these are not the only pictures there are so many two paintings out there i wish i could go to egypt we gotta go check for ourselves because if you read any book you will not get these you will not get these um this is all for the paintings Next, we're going to talk about the statues. 